What is up VR lover and welcome to this second episode of this mini tutorial series on how to make a physical VR body like in Boneworks. So you guys seem to enjoy the first episode. So let me continue on this path and show you this time how to move using physics with physics continuous movement and physics continuous turn that will allow us to slide on some surface, stick to some, be moved by others, a lot to cover but you already know the drill. Make sure to subscribe down below to not miss the next episode but most importantly what is making it possible for me to make this video is my Patreon. So if you'd like to support the channel and get access to exclusive content like the source code of the video that you are watching right now, join us, link in the description. Okay, so here we are where we were left at the end of the first episode. So making a continuous movement with physics is a bit the same as doing it with a character controller that we already seen previously on this channel. But this time we are going to use a rigid body and not a character controller to move. So let me show you. I'm going to select our physics rig, add a new component called continuous movement physics. There you go. Now let's double click on this script to open it. Perfect. So in this script, we will need a public float called speed, which will be the speed at which we will move. We can already set it to one. Then a public input action property. For this, let me write at the top a using unity engine dot input system. And let's call this input action property move input source. This will be the input that we will listen to move. And finally, we need a reference to the rigid body, of course. So let's call it simply RB. And finally, a public transform called direction source. This will be used to know in which direction we want to move. So in my case, I will set it later to where the player is looking at. Now that we got all the ingredients, let's cook our recipe. So to listen to the input of the player, Let's add a private vector two called input move axis. And in the update function, I'm going to do input move axis equals move input source dot action dot read value vector two parentheses. Now that we got the input, let's move the player with it. But as we are playing with a rich body, it's best to not do this in the update function here, but in the fix update instead. So I'm going to get the direction we want to move with quaternion yaw equals quaternion dot Euler zero direction source dot Euler angles dot y and then zero. There you go. And now we need to combine this yaw with the inputs to get the direction of the movement relative to where the player is looking at with vector three direction equals yaw multiplied by new vector three input move axis dot x zero input move axis dot y. And now move the rigid body with this new direction with rb dot move position rb dot position plus direction multiply by time dot fix delta time and multiply finally by our speed. There you go, so this is as simple as this. Now let's save and go back to Unity. As always, let's not forget to reference the parameter of the script for the input. I'm going to click on yes, use a reference and search for the left and locomotion move. Now, if we double click on it, as you can see, this is an input action that uses the left touchpad, which is what I wanted. And of course, you can tweak this action as you want or even create a new one. But in my case, I will just simply leave this like this and close these windows. Then for the direction source, let's drag the main camera of the VR rig. Here, you could use another direction. For example, use the right end instead if you'd like to move in the direction of the end is pointing. But finally, let's drag the rigid body of the XR origin in the RB parameter. And there you go. Now, if I click on play, as you can see, it works when I move with the left touchpad I can move my whole body, that is awesome. But that's not it. We've just opened the Pandora box of physics, which will allow us to do a lot of cool things. First here with the slope, because we are using physics, the steeper the slope, the harder it is to climb on them. But also we can interact with them using physics material. So let me show you an example. I have here on my project two physics material. Now, if you don't know how you can create them, you can simply go on the plus button here and click on physics material. And as you can see, I have one material that has not a lot of friction, but the other one has a lot of it, which means that if I use this high friction material on the steep slope collider, I can better climb on it but the opposite is true if there is no friction like if we were walking on a snowy platform for example as you can see i don't stick to the platform and i just slide and this is how you can use this physics material with our physics rig to create 
realistic interaction with our locomotion system as well. But that's not it. Again, because we are using physics, we can now interact with other physical elements. So for example, I have here a moving platform with a kinematic rigid body. Now let me open its script to show you what's inside. As you can see, the script is really simple. I simply have two positions and I'm moving the rigid body towards one of them. And when it reach it, it will simply swap the target position he is after. But let's go back to Unity to show you the real magic and click on play. Now here, because we are using physics, we can get on that platform and be moved by it. And what I'm using here on this collider is the high friction material to stay stuck to that platform because if I were to switch it with the low friction, my player would just slide when a change of movement happened. Of course, there is some cool other things that are possible with this system, like here with this homemade scale, I can move on top and be part of the physics simulation like you are seeing right now. And this is really cool in my opinion. So I guess that you are starting to understand how physics can be used with a locomotion system, but I think there is still room for improvement. So let me show you how to improve this by checking if we are grounded and implementing a continuous turn. Okay, so let's go back to our continuous move physics script. Now, the issue that we had is that we could move with the joystick even if we were not on the ground, and this can cause a problem. For example, if we are climbing, we of course don't want the player to be able to move if we are climbing, so this will fix it. So to check if we are on the ground, there are multiple ways, of course, to do this. But in my case, my favorite one is a sphere cast. So a sphere cast is like a ray cast, but with some white. Because the issue with using a ray cast is if we were on the edge of something, it could still think that we are not on the ground. So to use a sphere cast, let me just create a new function that will return a bool called check if grounded. I'm going to first get the start of the cast. So for this, we need a public reference to our capsule collider, body collider at the top. Then do vector3 start equals rb collider the transform dot transform point body center. Here the transform point allows us to convert the local position of the capsule collider to a world position. Then for the ray length, we can do float ray length equals body collider dot height divided by two and minus body collider dot radius. Now here we are subscribing the body collider dot radius because otherwise we could go above the capsule as you can see by this nice image. <laughs> Finally, we can add just a little bit of a surplus, just in case, like 0 0.05. This is to be able to see above the capsule collider in advance. There you go, now using these two value, we can check that we hit something with bool as it equals physics.spherecast, ray start, rb collider.radius, vector3.down, out, raycast it, it info, ray length, and the last parameter that we need is a layer max. So let me create a new public layer mask variable called ground layer, and let's write it in the sphere cast. And there we go. Now, as you can see with this, we are casting a sphere cast that starts at start as a radius of RB collider dot radius is going down and as a length of ray length. And we can now return has hit and call this in the fix update with bool is grounded equals check if grounded. And if we are grounded, we can compute the movement with the input. And there you go. This is how we can know if we are grounded or not. And you will see it will be important for what is coming next. So let's go back now to Unity. Simply for the ground layer, I'm going to assign it to the default in my case. For the body collider, let's drag our body over there. Here you go. And now perfect, if I click on play, I cannot control when I fall and neither when I climb, so everything is working as intended. Congratulations. And now the next big thing is the continuous turn. So, well, this is a bit the same, but this time, instead of moving the rigid body, we need to rotate it. So let me go at the top of the script and add a public float called turn speed that we can set at 60 degrees. And then a public input action property called input turn source and a private float called input turn axis. So let's first get the input of the player. In my case, I want to turn using the X axis of the right touchpad. So in the update function, we can do input turn axis equals input turn source dot action dot read value vector to parenthesis dot X. 
Now that we have the turn axis, here comes the tricky part, so stick with me. In the case of a VR rig, we cannot just rotate the whole rigid body, because the position of the player is not always centered at its position. So if the player walks physically, he will get far from the center, for example, and so if we only rotate the rigid body, the player will feel super dizzy because it's not rotating around himself. So the solution is to actually rotate the rigid body around the pivot that is the player. Now, this is a solution that, like a lot of things, I had to Google, so here is what I found. You first need to create a rotation, so a quaternion, with the angle and the axis that you want to use. So in our case, the axis is vector3.up, and the angle is turn speed multiplied by time dot fix the time multiplied by input turn axis. And then the quaternion is created using quaternion q equals quaternion dot angle axis angle axis. And using this quaternion, we can rotate the rigid body to the desired rotation by doing rb dot move rotation rb transform rb dot transform dot rotation multiply by q. But that's not did. As we have made a rotation, we need to shift back the position with vector3 new position equals q multiply by rb dot position, then minus the pivot position that we want. So for this, like we did for the move direction, I'm going to write at the top a new public parameter of type transform called turn source. So this will be a reference to the player head, and we will be able to use this again as the pivot in the offset that we are applying right now. So let's write rb dot position minus turn source dot position, and then add again plus turn source dot position. And finally, what's left is to apply this new position with rb dot move position new position. Now, for you guys who want to learn more about the math used here, I will leave a direct link in the description where I found this nice solution. But now that we got that out of the way, let's save and go back to Unity. There you go, as always. Let's reference the component for the input turn source. We can use a reference and use the right hand locomotion turn. And for the turn sounds, so the pivot that we are using to turn, let's select the main camera again, which will be used as the pivot. Oh, there is just a little issue. Why click and play? I'm so dumb here. I forgot just to write vector two instead of vector three when listening to the input. So make sure that the read value is set to vector two, not vector three to make it work. Sorry about it. So now let's go back and click on play. As you can see, it works. I can now turn using the right joystick with physics, but there is just a little bit of an issue. Now I cannot move anymore, so if we leave play mode and go back to Unity, we can have a look at the problem here. So the issue is that we are calling move position two times, and when we are turning, we are overriding the decision that we wanted for the position. So a quick fix is to first have a vector 3 called target move position, and use it over there for the move position with target move position equals rb dot position plus direction multiplied by blah 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 and use it here in the new position instead of the rb dot position and there you go now this way we will only have one move position call that will combine both move and turn so let's save and test everything and there you go guys now it works i can freely move and rotate in my scene and everything works fine and we succeed to make a physics locomotion system that works with our physics rig as well and now a world of cool thing is now enabled for us as we talked about earlier so if you guys are enjoying this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below and if you want to learn more about vr development and become a vr rockstar just like already 600 people join us on patreon link in the description thank you for watching and see you soon Bye-bye.